Hard Beast has shown you how to procedurally generate dungeons, and I'm going to teach you how to spawn enemies and treasures in them. The system I'm going to present was used in my game that you can see on the screen right now. Hey, Ives here, and let's dive straight into it. So, here is a project as it was at the end of the third part of the Hard Beast series. We will start working from here. It hasn't changed at all except for these two images. If you don't yet know how the original algorithm works, I highly recommend you to first watch Hard Beast tutorial series and then come back to this series. So, before we start adding the monsters and treasures, we need to create them. Create a new node. I will make them sprites. It's absolutely fine if you use any other node, it just must be Node2D or one of its children. Now, after we have created them, let's come to the Walker script. Here, in order to place the rooms we want, we need to first set the chance of their placement, and second, we need to create an array that will store all of the rooms of this type. So, we will start from the monsters. Here it is. Just for you to know, this system that I'm going to present you works mainly with the rooms. It's the cornerstone of the system. We will use available rooms to place objects in them. So keep that in mind. Since we have created this available rooms array, we need it to be equal to the rooms array at some point, particularly in the very beginning. So, after we have generated all the rooms, and before we return the step history, assign the rooms value to available rooms, and now these arrays are equal. Also, let's determine whether you want the monsters and treasures to spawn in the end room. I personally don't want it, so let's remove the ant room from the available array. Finally, back to the topic of this video, spawning monsters and treasures. Create a method for placing monster rooms. It will go through every available room and with a certain chance it will set the room as a place where monsters can be created. And we will also delete this room from the available rooms. Basically, the same approach is used for spawning the treasures. Set up the needed variables and create the appropriate method. You might also want to limit the maximum amount of treasures, so let's create another variable for the treasures and in the method check if the number of already placed treasures is lesser than the maximum we have just set. Finally, we can move to the world generation. First of all, let's create references to our monster and treasure scenes. Next, let's create a method that will put a certain object in a certain array of rooms. It will be used both for the monsters and the treasure chests. Here it is. As I said, it takes the scene of the object we want to create and the rooms array in which we want to place it. We go through every room in the array and instantiate a new object of the given scene and place it in the room's position. Easy as a pie. Now we need to call this method in the generate level method, right before we delete the walker. Here we code. We pass the monster scene and the array of the rooms we want to place it in. So we need to call this place object in rooms method twice because we have different arguments. Hmm. Seems like we're done here. Let's check what we have. Great. But hmm, seems a little bit weird. As you can see, the first problem is that sometimes the enemies spawn with the player or at least very close to them, and that's not good. You can also see sometimes they overlap each other. So let's fix these bugs. First we will deal with the problem that objects spawn too close to the player. We need to access the player's position in order to do that. So let's first create a reference in the world script to the player. 
and in the generate level method assign player instance value to the player and in the place object in rooms before we instantiate the object first check whether it's not too close to the player here it checks if the distance to the player from the room is not less than 128 pixels my tile set is 32 by 32 pixels size so basically it means the object must not be closer than four tiles you still can tweak it but i think four or five tiles is the minimum distance you can have and also the problem with objects spawning at the same spot it happens because sometimes walker goes around and it gets to the place where there is an already existing room but he creates another one. So there are two workarounds around that. First, we can check whether the walker is creating a room at the place of another room. And if so, not created. And other method would be just tweaking a little bit the object's spawn position here. I choose the second because it seems more interesting to me in terms of game design. It's actually quite easy. To the position of the object you just add a vector to of the random value up to a half of your tile size. Let's check what we've got. As you can see, we no longer have enemies nor the treasures spawn with the player and also all the enemies and treasures are separated. Of course sometimes there will be something like that, but in your actual game you might tweak the generation a little bit, so it's less prone to create a ton of rooms at the same spot, or you just figure something else out. So yeah, that's it. Now you know how to spawn monsters and treasures with Walker Procedure Generation Algorithm. I hope this video was helpful to you, and if it was, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.